What up, what up, what up? It is your boy, The Infinite, a.k.a. Lance, here with my co-pilot, Dan. And today we're here to talk about Solo. What's up, everybody? What's going on? Yes, uh, this is the Money Match Gaming Podcast talk show extravaganza spectacular. Uh, thanks again for joining us here on DLive, here on Twitch. And as Lance said, we are talking about the movie solo so uh as always since we are talking about something that's pretty new if you don't want spoilers don't watch uh we're bound to get into some even if accidentally probably mostly on purpose so it's good we're gonna talk about content of the movie uh if you don't want to be spoiled bye watch this later it'll be up on youtube so i mean if you're interested but if you are cool with being spoiled or have already seen it you know, hang out. Let's do this. Mm. Lance, you want to give us your little <laughs> sure. description of the movie? Sure, I'll give you guys the little bit of the intro for Solo, the movie, the Star I'm Wars movie. I'm going to pop off screen for a second. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, Solo, a Star Wars story poster gallery. Okay, I read the wrong part, but that's okay. Board the Millennium Falcon in the journey to the galaxy far, far away. In Solo, a Star Wars story. An all-new adventure with the most beloved scoundrel in the galaxy. Through a series of dark or darling escapades deep within a dark and dangerous criminal underworld, Han Solo meets his mighty future co-pilot Chewbacca and encounters the notorious gambler Lando... I can't say his last name. Calrissian. Calrissian. In a journey that will set the course of the Star Wars saga, most unlikely heroes, Solo, a Star Wars story released in U.S. theaters on May 25th, 2018. It was a weird intro. Like, everyone I looked up kind of sucked, but, you know, tis with the tis, and it is with the diz. Yep. You know? So, this movie was directed by Ron Howard uh, of Happy Days fame and Arrest Development and uh, all sorts of things. Ron Howard's a well-known director and actor. Uh, and it is starring Alden Einrich. Uh, he's the guy who plays uh, Han Solo. You have... Uh, Amelia Clark, she plays Kira. Donald Glover, uh, my favorite person probably in the world. Uh, he plays Lando Calrissian. And Woody Harrelson plays Beckett. Those are the main characters. You got some other characters there, but uh, L3, the robot, uh, she was played, that's played by Phoebe Waller Bridge. I don't know who that was, but she did great. Uh, I actually really like the robot until I read her full name is L337. Uh, which is supposed to be Leap, which I thought we were done doing. So I, I was kind of disappointed with that part. But yeah, L3 is what they called her throughout the movie. So yeah, man, uh, I'll give you a shot at it first, man. What are your general feelings, man? I very much so enjoyed this movie. I didn't think going into it, and even afterwards, I didn't think this movie really needed to exist. There was no real point. You don't, like, We don't need to know more about Han Solo. But I was very happy with watching this movie. I very much so enjoyed it. I thought it was very fan service -y in a good way. Uh, did a lot of uh, parts of Han Solo's lore, like things that he talked about. It was kind of like a Han Solo greatest hits tape in a way. Uh, whereas like he did the Kessel Run. It showed him meeting Chewie and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, overall, I very much so enjoyed this movie. Uh, what about you? Uh, see... Blah, 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 blah. It was just very blah for me. Like, the movie wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. I I don't think they set up his general story very well. Um, it felt like the first episodes of a TV series. And quite honestly, it probably would work better as a TV series, you know? And this was just, like, the first episode. Like, the plot itself just lacks so much meaning that I just kind of was left like, okay, I, I guess that's it, maybe, I guess, you know, and, and you know, I, like, I, I was expecting, you know, a, a movie that kind of got a little bit deeper into how he affected the main story, because, like, clearly there was, like, the one element to where they do provide fuel to what looks like the beginning of the Resistance, to where they can fuel all of their entire fleet, and they can do whatever it is they're attempting to do, and, you know, he, he did a big solid well, those are, there. Those are still Rebels. It's not the Resistance yet. Resistance doesn't come for many, many years. 
Right. So it's like, you know, I can kind of see how, like, the force, you know, because that's generally what I call these things. And I, I was going to get into it a little bit later, but, like, how it all kind of works its way out in the stories and stuff like that. But, like, I was hoping more of an origin story, like they do superheroes, to where, mm-hmm. you know, they actually go into, you know, like, what makes Han Solo Han Solo? You know, like, he's just... He, he just, like, you know, they march you smack dab at, you know, okay, I'm, I'm starting my life now. Mm-hmm. And when they start you there, it's like, he's just Han Solo. He's like Han Solo the entire movie. There was no mm-hmm. kind of, okay, I'm learning how Good to development. do this, that, and the other. He was just he was just Han Solo the entire movie, you know? And it's like, I, I left the movie and I was kind of like, all right, well, like, this is how I think it went, you know? On a mining planet uh, that is run by crime and it's bad. Makes it out alive, uh, leaves his girlfriend, joins the Empire, and meets a mercenary where he learns to, the chops of being a mercenary, which is essentially don't trust anybody. Um, so, you know, all his real training is essentially the Empire Army, which doesn't appear to be very much of anything. They hand you a gun and go, hey, go shoot stuff. You no, know, I mean, he was trained before that, and there was three years before, in between the scene where he's separated from his girlfriend and he's shown in that battle. There's a three-year period that it just says three years later. So he, I'm sure he had some formal training in those three years. I'm sure it wasn't just, there you go, have fun. Like, well, I mean, the only reason I'm alluding to some of those things is because I did recognize that it was three years. It just it just didn't allow the character to develop in a sense. And we're just supposed well, right. to expect him The character him was already be... flushed out at the beginning of the movie. He right. was already the Han Solo that we like and know is just a different guy and a younger version. Right, and it, I kind of didn't like that aspect, you know? Like, it, at the end of the day, his character, he's just lucky as shit. Like, that's just, like, his M.O. He's just lucky. Like, everything yeah. kind of happens the way it's supposed to by pure luck. But, I mean, that was Domino's force. superpower in Deadpool, so... I mean, sure, yeah. And, and you know, like, that, that's fair. Like, but this is, like, an entirely different universe that... Kind of feels like it works that way. And, like, again, I I was going to get into it a little bit later. But that's just my general thoughts is I was kind of just very underwhelmed because I was hoping for some important plot points or at least a more in-depth explanation of what Han Solo is. Instead, you got, hey, you guys like Han Solo, right? Well, here's the side story. You know, and it's like like if you're reading the story out loud to a group of individuals, they go, okay, well, what does it have to do with the mainline series? Nothing. It's just a story. It literally could stand on its own. And yeah. even then, you know, if it did, it just wouldn't make very much sense. And so it's like, I, I don't know. That's kind of the way I feel. But I mean, you know me. I'm like kind of the guy that really enjoys deeper meaning. You know, I, I, out of everything that we've talked about, I, I really like. See, I think the problem the is you're getting too hung up on the main series. And you got to understand the main series is the Skywalker story. That's it. The main series is all about the Skywalkers. If they're not involved, there's really no connection to the main series to them. Rogue One had Darth Vader at the end. Boom. There's your Skywalkers. There's your connection. But for the most part, like, we're going to see a lot of movies that don't connect with these main series because a lot of shit happens in this giant universe that's not main series. I would argue that, like, the main series has more to do with the Force and, and, and no, like, no. the dealings of the Force. And just Those were just the powerful Force users of the time. Basically, no. is how how I was not though because there's other there's other people and that can use it and probably better, but the story focuses on the Skywalkers because the the first original trilogy is the story of Luke Skywalker and him overcoming his dad. The prequel trilogy is uh, the story of Anakin Skywalker starting good, going bad, and then the sequel trilogy that's going on now is post in a post Skywalker world now, sort of because everybody else is dead except for Leia, but she's also dead. So it's, yeah. (laughs) I mean, that, that felt, that felt weird. That last statement, but it's, it's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's true, but it's, It's, I mean, she's alive in the moot in Canon, but 
you know as far as real life yeah exactly yeah. i mean yeah. i mean sure but like e even still like i i would still say that the story seems to revolve more around the force and stuff and they were just the hot topic at the time i thought that this movie was really cool because it brought in a lot of extended universe things which is the things that i like the things that they don't talk about in the main series but are still important in the grand scheme of things like what Oh, well, for for example, at the end there, they brought well throughout the movie, the the faction Crimson Dawn was brought up, and that is something that I need to look more into because I'm very interested in their whole whereabouts, uh, specifically because and you know their leader is Maul, and I know that a lot of people were surprised by that because they don't watch like you know Clone Wars or Rebels. Maul's not dead; he never died in the end of the first one. He became a spider robot at a period and went crazy. And then he got robot legs and then he lost his robot legs or didn't lose his robot legs. He was given like real legs again. And then I think he went back to robot legs. I'm pretty sure he had robot legs in this movie. He also appears in Rebels and I haven't watched Rebels, so I don't know what his role is in there. But that the Rebels timeline would put him like that. Rebels, I think, takes about place pretty much the same place as this movie. So I'm sure that they might go into Crimson Dawn more uh in rebels or something of that nature, even though that shows ending, but I think they might do it in this last season and whatnot. So I like things like that. I like nods like that. I like showing, uh, I, I really liked, like I said earlier, I really liked L337 and her idea of like sentience with the robots and how they are sentient beings. So stop making them not be sentient, let them do their own shit. Uh, I don't know. Just, all, all the, all the fucking, uh, what you call it? All the other factions we see, the, the whole idea. I mean, I didn't really like how Han Solo got his name, but I liked, I liked that in a sense. Like I didn't, I thought it was kind of cheesy, but I also thought I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess that makes sense that his name is Solo. I don't know. There was all, all sorts of nods just all around the movie. Gonk Droid got some play. There was some Gonk Droid in this movie. You know, I love me some Gonk Droid favorite character in lego star wars hit me up gonk droid heads but uh <laughs> yeah man it was cool i thought it was a really cool movie i thought it was really fun i thought and i specifically thought it was acted pretty well by everybody the only thing that i really didn't like of the movie was kira i thought her character was confusing her character arc she kind of just kept changing you could never really tell what her mindset was and i guess that's part of the character but it didn't really make any sense like she didn't really have any allegiances she just kind of did things and like is she a manipulator i don't know she doesn't seem like she's manipulated like to some extent yes but to some extent she's just like you know it's weird i don't i don't know how to handle her to be honest yeah what did you feel about her i mean when I was when I was making uh, the image for today's podcast and stuff like that, like I I saw some like leak stuff when I was looking up images for the movie, and I wouldn't say it's leaked, but just like clearly somebody's trying to make theories, and mm -hmm. it, it it they either a use this actor, um, in one of the previous series to where she's actually a part of the resistance. She's like a Amelia Clark. Yeah, I think so. You know, I don't believe she's in anything else from Star Wars. So it was like, I'm not, I'm not sure 100, percent but they were like, oh, you know, like, hey, spoilers, and they kind of have like, I don't know, it was like weird, but like I, I couldn't tell either. But again, you know, like nothing significant seems to happen in this movie. You know, and like it's just, it, I mean, it's it depends on what you consider significant. Like I said, the movie is all fan service. There's not really a lot of content in the movie that's not fan service. It's Han get meeting Chewie for the first time. It's Han, uh, you know, doing the the Kessel Run in Twelve Parsecs, or you know, the, the, that shit that he tells everybody. It, it's Han, you know, keeping them them lucky dice he keeps lying around where he gets them and then gives them to the girl and then gets them back. And it's just it's just like a Han Solo circle jerk. But whatever, I didn't need that in my life. I really didn't. But I'm happy that we have it because it was it was a good product, and they did set it up that they could build more story off of this if they wanted to. They, I don't think they're going to because it underperformed in like the box office, because 
most people uh, are under this the, the thought that we didn't really need a Han Solo movie, and they're not wrong. We don't. We we didn't then. We still don't. But it we do, and it's not terrible. It's better than the Last Jedi, in my opinion. It does a like a good job telling his story. Uh, but yeah, Han Solo, man. So, so, so. <laughs> but yeah, Han Solo. I mean. There's that, and then, like, you know, our last podcast, we talked about it a little bit to where it's, like, they, there's more important stories to tell. Like, original Jedi movie would be awesome. Just them going to the roots of the Force and, like, where it started and where Jedi started and stuff. Their names, their creed, how the creeds changed, how they used to all be one faction. And, and, and I too people good. get a lot of that stuff, but I think it's, you know, all down the line. I think Solo is... Probably one of the easier ones because of, he, of how braggadocious he was. You're just like, oh, okay, let's just use the shit he talks about in these movies and make a movie out of it. Like, it's probably the easiest concept to, to revolve a movie around. I think we will, like, Star Wars is going to exist for a long time. This movie did not hurt Disney in the sense that they were like, oh, no, maybe we're doing too much Star Wars. Nah, man. You, people are still going to go regardless. This will still make them money in the long run. Like, it's not making them maybe first week money like they were liking, but it'll make them money. And uh, we, we will get some, like, more extended universe stuff and, like, lore Star Wars. Whether it be a movie or a show, I'm not sure. I think probably a show. That would be really cool, though. Like a, a, like a Jedi, like, Knights show for, like, HBO or something like that. It would have, this would have worked better as a TV show, as, like, a Game of Thrones installation type of deal. I, yeah, but the, the only problem with that is it would have to be, like, a miniseries because at a certain point, it, like, it has to end. You can't go on forever doing that, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's I'm, why I'm think, fine like, as a, a, like, a two or three movie set also works probably just as good. Because, like, I just don't like this as a movie. Like, like it just it didn't feel right, you know? And, and I felt like we were... Kind of cheated. It wouldn't make sense if you weren't familiar with any other Star Wars. That's the that's the over underlying issue with this movie, is that if you aren't familiar with the source content, this movie is a nothing gobbledygook best of nothingness. Nothing, none of it can make like any sense. This is you're over here like this was for the boys, all right? Yeah, no, and it, it really has to be said that way. It, but like, I, and I suppose, but but and it, and it's but I mean, and that's that's a negative part of it too, though. Because you want to th- you want to create something that is like going to be universally able to be accepted. But if you don't have any knowledge of Star Wars, you're gonna look at this and you're like, "Why should I care about any of this?" Because you're you're absolutely right. The story is definitely lacking in some meat. It's just it's not really there. It's just a heist sort of, <laughs> sort kind of. of exactly. It's like yeah, yeah maybe right, right. Like, exactly. I, I I totally get what what you're saying, and I understand. That like why you're like well that makes it a bad movie and you're probably right but for what it was worth if you are interested in the rest of the source content it was very entertaining i thought and everyone else who i saw it with agreed what i have to give it props for is the gravity well scene with the random space monster i was pretty hype about that scene Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like that, big, that scene was Starlight that scene finished. was like pretty fire for me. Like I, I actually really enjoyed it. My daughter was freaking out. You know, she's like, "Oh my gosh!" She's she's waving her hands all around and acting like she's the octopus thing. You know, that was pretty lit. Like something about that scene was pretty epic for me. You know, and I think that was really really well done. You know, to where it's like, but like there just felt so much. This felt forced to me. You know, like it, it just didn't. Like, like you said, it, it just felt like it was slapped together from things that he was said, that he said in, in the past series and stuff. And I just, I think they could have told a much more compelling story. Like, cool, yay, you did this. But there was ways that they could have worked all that stuff in the story in a more compelling way. And I mean, that's the only reason why I'm kind of giving it the kind of shaft the way I'm giving it is because, like, you know, like, I do like Star Wars, you know? Mm-hmm. It's great, it's awesome, but, you know, that doesn't mean that they should kind of just go okay well we'll throw this we'll throw you a bone and you know we'll do what we can but yeah meh 
You know, so there's also a lot of issues. Like, I think the the fact that this movie existed and was at all pretty good is even incredible because this movie went through a lot of fucking shit in its development. Oh, like, like a lot of shit. I don't know if you're familiar. Oh, I'm not. That's that's what I depend on you for, my man. Yeah. uh, All right. So while it was being made, about three quarters of the way through filming everything, uh, there was some sort of dispute between Disney and the writers and directors of the movie. So they split, and then they pretty much filmed mainly the whole movie again from scratch. So they did it pretty quickly. But for what it's worth, this is halfway decent. But it, it could have been a lot worse. I'm happy it was the level it was. But yeah, I, there could, it could have, there, they could have been, they could have done more. One thing that, I, another thing that I'll say that I didn't like about the movie is the soundtrack was really lacking in, in uh, the meat department. Like, I I really like Star Wars music. It's very good. And when it's there and when it like hits the right notes, it it tickles the heartstrings a little bit. And this just did not have anything. The one cool song was when they were in the the uh not the cantina but like the like uh, like rich person cantina when they're when they're first meeting with Crimson Dawn mm-hmm. and you got like that lady singing like that smooth jazzy cantina type song with right. the, with the like floating head thing there like that was cool i thought that was a cool song but the rest of the movie just wasn't doing it for me nothing really memorable you don't got like the john williams score like <laughs> like even yeah phantom menace had some dope music for what that movie was that movie was boring but it had some cool music well because it was missing a lot of typical star wars things i think mm-hmm. you know and, and I, like again that's kind of the real issue, you know, and, I, and that's why I keep kind of leaning towards this other side. You know, it makes sense now why, why I think the movie's a, a lacking a lot, mm-hmm. you know, that, that you gave me that explanation. And that it, it all makes sense, but it's still kind of lacking. You know, even the characters kind of just felt smashed together. And, it, and like, you know, you don't connect with anybody, you know. There's like no reason to go, oh, well, I like him or her or, or this or, or that. You know, you, you mentioned the main girl, you know. Like, I, I don't remember half their names, you know, to where it's yeah. like I, I couldn't tell if she was good or bad or like I mean, the only reason I can remember most of their names is because that they've existed in the universe before and I'm familiar with those characters like Han Solo, Lando. Yeah, I, I would know Han Solo. I would know I Lando. had to look up the robot's name and I knew Kira just because I was like, oh, Kira, like, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, like Death Note, but it's not, it's not the same kind of spelling as Death Note. So it's like, you know, like you just, I, I don't know, things happen and it's like, I, I, I hate that. I hate that, that, that I'm forced to say that about the movie that, oh yeah, things happened. You know, and it's like, you know, if I were to sit down and I try to have a conversation about, like, the movie, like we are now, it just, it's just like, there's not much to say. There's nothing yeah. really to say about the movie other than blah. You know, it was, yeah. it was Star Wars. I liked it because it was Star Wars. And then past that, you're kind of just like, well, I guess, you know, and it's just yeah, like, no. th- there's, I, just, I, I there's just no reason that they, they couldn't have accidentally landed on an Empire cruiser and, you know, they were assaulted and there's laser beams that they're running and things are blowing up. Like, it, th- these things could happen, you know, like, there's no reason that they couldn't do a heist on a more act. Like, I, I get it. I know why they didn't, because it would, just wouldn't make sense for the mercenary yeah, thing. Yeah, but also, they I mean, it wouldn't make sense for Han so much because he wasn't very involved i don't think he wanted to get involved with the politics of everything i th- like oh, obviously didn't. at the end he chose like he chose the a side sort of but he just wanted to be like a good guy it wasn't because he was like oh they're shitty like he fucking was part of the empire for a period of time he worked for them for three years i think he just understood like the world and he was very yeah. real about its situation like mm-hmm. okay i could go back to this crime written planet and live like a beast or or i could just go work for him you know mm-hmm. and it's like you know I, I punch in and i punch out you know but in reality if i'm given a decision to do something good versus something bad i'll choose the something good or find a happy medium because like that's what it feels like that's what han solo feels like it's like all right well yeah I'm okay with stealing, you know, I'm okay with theft, you know, and if I could do it and then be a little bit of a Robin Hood, then sure. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll make that decision over everything else. But like, I, don't, I never got, really got the feeling like he was a good guy. But then again, you know, he shoots, you know, 
the guy he was learning from, he just blasted. Yeah. <laughs> he blasted. He shot him. first, man. <laughs> and then he I'm casually first, walks man. over and is like, "Yeah, I'm gonna hold you while you pass over." You know. Well, it's but like, the like to be fair, Woody Harrelson was like, "I was gonna do that to you too, so good job." Well, yeah, I mean, it was part of it's part of his training, and I think right. you know, like again, you know, especially with the band that he ends up with, they're they're essentially not terrible people; they're just living within the constraints of the their universe. reality, you yeah. know. So it's like if if everybody's crooks, you know, you, you got to you know, kind of be a crook if you want to survive. Exactly. So it's like Unless you want to just eat dirt and bread like everybody else in the universe who's not a crook. Right. So it's like, you know, like be a scavenger, live on the lowest of low, don't have anything, not even basic essentials. Or, you know, you uh, steal a little bit on the side and, and sell have it on the fun. black market, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Get, yeah. Go on some adventures, you know, steal right. some shit. <clears throat> right. But I mean, like, that was pretty much my only good thing about the movie, though, was the space gravity well. I actually really enjoyed that scene. Something about it. It was just weird. It was goofy. There was no real reason for it to exist. I really liked how they were flying through. And they were like, yeah, um, we have this space cruiser. That's the size of this whole like pathway channel thing. And it was just like really interesting how like the Force works. Like In every Star Wars story, there's always a bunch of elements that shouldn't happen but do and i actually really enjoy that part about the story is is just like so many things just feel like dumb luck you know and and this was like no different you know you know lando's droid gets shot you know and he like freaks out and he goes and picks it up you know like he actually cares or something well, he does I, I, he wasn't lo- he loved that droid she said it earlier and uh and kira was like yeah okay yeah lando loves you but lando legitimately loved that robot yeah he loved her a little bit of sass you know she was fun and nice to have around and i all mean he stuff. fucked her they they mentioned that in the movie he did yeah they mentioned that yeah because uh whatchamacall kira's like oh so how's that work and l3 just like it does don't worry about it i didn't know that yeah they I, were, I they were emotionally invested into each other i thought that was just a joke no Lando's a weird dude. <laughs> dude, Lando, dude, Lando's what you gotta understand, like, and that was a big thing when this movie came out. They announced that Lando was pansexual. Like, who obviously, if you live in a universe where there's just all sorts of different types of beings, you're probably not just gonna fuck the humanoids. It's not like especially if they're all sentient and all trying to like occasionally you'll be like, oh, whatever, I'm gonna fuck the giant blob monster today. Whatever, it's a weird world we live in. Let's live it up. I mean, it happens like, in Star Trek, right? You know? For sure, it happens all over Kirk, the place. Yeah, Kirk. Kirk yeah. don't uh, care. Uh, what you call it? In, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. really don't oh, think about any it that space way. space opera. The characters should all be pansexual. It, it just does, it just makes sense that way. They all fuck whatever. It's just the. I mean, it's probably the still the whatever gender they're attracted to, whether it be male or female or. If aliens even have gender, I don't know. There's a lot of weird shit that goes into it. But yeah, like for sure. And Lando, of course, like he's like the freest thinker, dude, like freest dude of all time, man. He's just like, yeah, man, go with the flow. Fucking Lando. Bro. Yeah, man, go with the flow. <laughs> yeah. The whole, like yeah, I've got 30 guy. hired guns in that cruiser over there. Keep playing with me. Flies <laughs> off. You're like, damn, bro. <laughs> he got his he got his comeuppance at the end, though, you know? He got, he got caught in the uh, poker game. I mean, I don't know if I would have left. He left a little too fast for me. Like, like there were nobody yeah, approaching. Yeah, he was, he was <laughs> he out. Left, he was he like, left super no, fast. No. I, was, I, like, semi-laughed on the inside because I'm like, bro, like, gun, like they didn't even start popping off yet. Like, he didn't even wait until the first he doesn't want, Listen, he doesn't want to be there when they're popping off because then he's going to be like, ah, okay, I'll help. Like, I, I thought nah, that he part was, just was out kind of silly man because i was like i just don't i don't like why is he leaving man like <laughs> hey he was pissed man he was not in the best mood with all those guys first of all they destroyed his ship uh she was using his cape kira used his cape to put out a fire he was not very happy about that he yelled about it in the movie like yeah, he was not he, he was not happy with those folks they they treated him wrong so he was like nah i'm taking my ship and my capes and i'm getting the hell out of here i hey more power to him it was it was just awkward but i'm i'm kind of like taking it back a little bit like i thought it was a joke now sex robots are on the rise all right 
They're it's coming. not sex robots. They're not. She's not made for sex. She's just sentient and wanted. They wanted to have consensual consensual sex with each other. It's not like he raped the robot. Well, I'm not saying that. Like, I, 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 I don't right. think she's a sex robot. She's just a regular <laughs> robot. But it's possible for them to have sex somehow. I don't know. They didn't go into the details in the movie. She was just like, it's possible. And I was just like, all right, I'll take it at face value. Man. Like, that went straight over my head, man. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. She straight up, she was like, hey, Lando's attracted to me. And Kira's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And she's like, sure, of course. And then at the end, you're just like, oh, well, he totally is in love with her. I'm mad she didn't, like, jump on the ship, though. Like, I understand why it happened, but even still, I'm kind of like, eh. I was, like, hoping that the ship would talk, like, after you find out that it's actual a sentient robot. Yeah, you, I agree, but at the same time, it makes sense that it doesn't, because it's it doesn't so ever, right. ever yeah, yeah. throughout the rest of the movie, so it'd be weird to be like, hey, I talk for a little bit here. This is the period in my life where I talk. This is all true. But, but it like, makes sense. That's why that ship has such like great maps and able to get pretty much anywhere super quick because she had like the most impressive map database on her hard drive. I don't know. It's weird. Man. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. That's, that's pretty much all I got for the movie, though. Like, yeah, again, that's pretty much it, was, it for me, yeah, too. It was, it was such a bare-bones movie. You know, and it's like unfortunate that the movie happened the way it happened because I'm I have a feeling that the original depiction of the movie was probably better and just had more to it, and then they just ah. took the essential plot points and we're like, ah, we'll ride with that. I do not know. So I mean, Honestly. we'll never know, right? I think the other one was way funnier from what I heard about it, but I don't know. All right, do you, you have anything else? No, like that's, that, no? I, I have literally <laughs> said everything I've got written down. See, and then so I'm gonna go ahead and rate this movie and it's bad. I'm gonna give this movie a four. Uh again, I, I just feel like they didn't hit anywhere near what a Star More Star Wars movie should be able to do. You know? Like it, it just like there's just so much more that they could have done to this story that make mm -hmm. it like kind of all time, you know, because it's not like Han Solo isn't interesting. You know, like he is. I like Han Solo. You know, I, I don't know if he's like he all time. You know, especially with Jedi within the realm of possibility and things. Yeah, of that he's probably nature. like the least interesting characters of what you know, the series. And so you know, there's like that element, but then like there's also like because it's not like mercenaries and such aren't useful because you know Jedi and all that other stuff they do use them, and it's not like assassins don't kill jedi or anything like that so it's like you know like it's cool that you get a character that seems to have more importance than like what's led on in most of the movies and stuff like that because i think there is a little extra to han solo than just a random mercenary who decides to help at random times like it just feels more deeper to that and maybe there's like some I mean, yeah, weird connection to force and stuff like that he doesn't have connection to the force that's i mean We've already seen him die and him not have connection to the Force. He doesn't have connection to the Force. I thought everybody had connection to the Force. Just well, okay, so he, does, he doesn't... Sorry, everyone, I guess, does have connection to the Force, but he's not, like... he doesn't Force user, control. yeah. He's not a user to any extent. Right, and, yeah, like, that's, that's basically what I meant. It's just, like, he just seems to play a very important role within all the other movies and stuff and, like, how the events plan out and stuff. Not all of them, obviously, just the original trilogy and, mm -hmm. you know, all that other stuff. So, I mean, yeah, that's kind of how I feel, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm giving it a uh, a yes. If I mean, specifically, if you like uh, Star Wars... If you're interested in, like, Star Wars more than just, like, the main movies, if you like the books and you like the, the shows and everything else that goes to Star Wars, the games and the lore and stuff, I think this is a cool movie. If you have no interest in that, this movie doesn't really need to exist, so you don't really need to see it. There's no, like, real major uh, things that happen into it. I mean, I guess we get to see that Maul is still alive, if you didn't already know that. But, yeah, Maul is still there. He, for, so, for all we know, he could have still some sort of connection to the whole grander story. Probably not, but who knows, you know? Crazier things have happened, but 
Yeah, I, I say yes, go see it. Unless, of course, you don't care about Star Wars, then you probably weren't listening to this. So, But if that's <laughs> you, then no, don't go see it. You probably not enjoy it. It doesn't really have a plot. And what's up? I'm Johnny, Johnny Mills, man. What's going on? We're closing up here, so there's not really much else to say. But, I mean, I don't mind if we stick around and answer your questions or anything like that if you have any. But, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much oh. what we got today. It's 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 a decent movie. You know, it, it's okay. A co- an, okay at best. On another note, uh, not related uh, to Star Wars or Solo or anything at, at all, if anyone in the audience is a Pokemon fan, this is pretty cool news. Attention trainers, a Pokemon press conference is about to begin in Tokyo, Japan. You'll want to turn on your notifications for this one. Follow along for some exciting Pokemon news. I think this is the Pokemon Switch game that everybody's been uh, looking for. So if you are a Pokemon fan, check out check out the Pokemon Twitter. Keep yourself posted uh, because I think we're going to get some news on the next Pokemon game. So that'll be kind of cool. I mean, I saw some memes about it. They were like, oh, all the Nintendo fans who are excited about Smash Switch. And then it shows... And then the Pokemon weebs come. <laughs> and like it's like this dude getting out of bed and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. But I'm just saying. It was kind of funny. I mean, I like Pokemon too, so it's like it's I, cool. and a lot of people have wanted a console Pokemon forever, so this is that. And hopefully it's awesome. It could end up being bad. What I think I was reading like some leaked things about it. Uh supposedly it's gonna be going back to the first gen Kanto region. Uh, and just a more like it's a nostalgia game, pretty much, kind of like X and Y, but instead of being a new generation, it's it's just back in the Kanto region, but it's all freshened up for 2018 graphics wise and game. But uh, I'm sure the gameplay will be relatively so kind of like a remaster. Yeah, kind of like yeah, kind of like a, a, a remaster of uh, blue and red and uh, yellow. Yellow, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm that is just from like what the leak I, I heard. I'm sure it'll be a little bit different, uh, and it'll be cool. I don't know. I love Pokemon, so I think whatever it is will probably be pretty cool. Unless it's not. Anyway. <laughs> Unless it's not. Like it's really hard to break that game. So it's like right, exactly. They just stay to the same formula, and it's fine. Don't do anything like crazy. Don't make it like an action combat game. Oh, JRPG type of situation. Yeah. Take a complete turn-based game and make a JRPG. Like I mean, you could with everything if, if else. If it works, if it's cool and works, uh, I don't know how. Turn it into an MMO. You just play as a Pokemon rather than a trainer. That'd be weird. It'd be weird, man. But it, it might. Who knows? Peta would like it more. Who? Peta. People for the ethical treatment of animals. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to argue there. Yeah, uh, that's all I got. But that's, yeah, that's pretty much what we got. Uh, thank you, D-Live, for that upvote. Thank you, I'm Johnny Mills, for coming out. Uh, K4 hey. Kicks is you as well. Um, yeah. We're going to go ahead thank and go down on D-Live first. And until next week, uh, we don't have a set on topic, but, uh, you know, you'll find out. Yes. You'll find out. See you guys next week. You as well, Twitch. Good night, good night, good night. Super hard to get extra excited because it was just kind of, you know, ah. So, but uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next week, man.